Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how to determine the deflection and slope of a beam caused by the effects of bending. In general, the methods of determination of the deflection of a beam can be classified into two main categories, which are analytical methods and semi-graphical methods. Analytical methods are the direct integration method and the method of superposition method. Semi-graphical method is called the moment area method. In this video, we are going to discuss the direct integration method. In previous videos, we developed an important relationship between the internal moment, the radius of curvature, rho, the modulus of elasticity, E, and the moment of inertia, I, as follows. 1 over rho equals m over EI. 1 over rho is called the curvature. The product EI is called the flexural rigidity, and it is always positive. The equation of the elastic curvature can be also shown mathematically as follows. Here, we assume that we have small beam deflections and small slopes. Therefore, the term dy over dx whole square can be neglected as compared to 1. Thus, we can rewrite the equation of the elastic curvature as follows. 1 over rho equals d square y over dx square. The differential equation, which describes the deflected shape of a beam under bending moment, m, x, is as follows. d squared y over dx squared equals mx over ei. Assuming ei is constant, if we integrate the above equation one time, we get dy over dx, which is theta x, the slope of the beam at location x. The following equation is obtained. If we integrate the above equation two times, we can calculate the deflection of the beam in the y direction at location of x. The following equation is obtained. Based on the differential relationship between W, V, and M, the following three set of equations can be written. Either of the above equations can be used in order to calculate the deflection of the beam Y, X, and the slope dy over dx, which is theta x. For example, if we use w, x, in order to find the equation of deflection, we need to integrate w, x, four times. This means we are generating four constants of integration. The constants of integration can be determined using the boundary conditions and continuity conditions. Now we're going to look at boundary and continuity conditions. For boundary conditions, in cases of roller and pin supports, which are shown in figures 1, 2, 3, and 4, deflection must be zero. If the roller and pin supports are located at the ends of the beam, as they are shown in figures 1 and 2, the internal moment in the beam must be zero too. At the fixed support, which is shown in figure 5, displacement and slope are 0. At the free-ended beam, figure 6, both shear and moment are 0. And finally, the moment must be 0 at the internal pin or hinge connections shown in figure 7. In continuity conditions, in the cases that the elastic curve cannot be expressed with a single equation, we need to define different coordinates. This means we will get different equations for each region. However, the elastic curve is always continuous. Therefore, we use this fact as continuity condition and calculate the integration constant. For example, in case 1, we have two x coordinates, x1 with origin at A, and x2 with origin at c. Then we will have two equations for the deflection based on x1 ranges from 0 to a and x2 ranges from 0 to b. But since the elastic curve is physically continuous then continuity of the deflection and slope at point b 
requires that y1a equals y2b and theta 1a equals negative theta 2b. Here, the negative sign is necessary to match the slopes at b for both coordinates. Since x1 is positive to the right and x2 is positive to the left. Same concept follows for case 2. The proper sign conventions that we are using throughout this course is as follows. Upward distribution loads W on the beam are positive. The shear load V causes a clockwise rotation of the beam segment is positive and the internal moment which has caused compression in the top fibers of the segment is positive. Also in calculation of the deflection and slope of the beams, positive deflection is always upward. Positive slope angle theta will be measured counterclockwise from x axis and when x is positive to the right. Positive slope angle theta will be measured clockwise from x axis when x is positive to the left. The deflection and slope of a beam can be calculated using the integration method by the following step-by-step -step procedure. 1. Draw an exaggerated view of the beam's elastic curve. 2. Establish the x and y coordinate axis. The x axis must be parallel to the undeflected beam. 3. If several discontinuous loads are present, then establish a new origin for each region. 4. Express the loading W and or the internal moment M as a function of X. 5. Provided EI is constant, apply either the differential equation for the load W, X, which requires for integration, or the moment equation M, X, which requires two integration. 6. Use boundary conditions and continuity conditions to determine the constants of integration. Now we're going to look at an example. In this example, for the beam and loading shown, we are going to determine the equation of the elastic curve, the slope at end A, the deflection at the midpoint of the span. The first step is to draw an exaggerated view of the beam's elastic curve. In the second step, we need to establish the x and y coordinate axis in order to find mx or wx functions. However, in this example, the wx function is provided. Because we have downward load distribution, our wx function has a negative sign. Therefore, we can rewrite the wx function as follows. Now we can use the differential equation of wx, which is shown by equation 1. If we integrate equation 1, we can get the equation for shear load vx, and we are generating the integration constant c1. We need to integrate equation 2 in order to get the moment equation mx. Before continuing the integration, use boundary conditions to determine the constants c1 and c2. We have a roller support at point A and a pin support at point B. Because they are located at both ends of the beam, the internal moment at these two locations must be equal to zero. Therefore, we can write when x equals zero, m equals zero. Using equation three, we can find c2 equals zero. When x equals l, m equals zero. Using equation three, we can calculate c1 equals one over three w naught l squared. By substituting c1 and c2 in equation 3, we can rewrite the moment equation as equation 4. Now, if we integrate this equation one time, we get equation 5, which is the equation of slope. If we integrate equation 4 two times, we can get the equation of the deflection of the beam, which is equation 6. To calculate constants c3 and c4, we need to use the boundary conditions. We can write the boundary conditions as follows. When x equals 0, y equals 0, then using equation 6, we can get c4 equals 0. When x equals l, y equals 0, then using equation 6 again, 
C3 equals negative 1 over 30 times W naught times L cubed. Finally, by substituting C3 and C4 in equations 6 and 5, the deflection and slope equations are equations 7 and 8. By substituting x equals 0 in equation 8, the slope at point A can be calculated as theta A equals negative m naught times L cubed over 30 EI. Also, by substituting x equals L over 2 in equation 7, the deflection of beam at point C can be calculated as yc equals negative 61 over 5760 times w naught times l to the power of 4 over ei, which means the deflection of the beam at point C is yc equals 61 over 5760 times w naught times l to the power of 4 over ei acting downward. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.